Hello and welcome to my channel. Previously, I've done a Google Forms tutorial, but there have been new things that I've learned and updates that Google has made since then. So I wanted to add this updated tutorial to reflect those changes. So what initially prompted me to want to do this update was when Google moved the settings right here. So the settings just look different Mostly I use the same settings that I shared in the previous tutorial, but I'm going to go through them all anyway, just so you can see where they are now. So if you're using Google Forms to create a graded assignment, the first thing you want to do is toggle the switch over that says make this a quiz. Then decide how you want your grades released. Do you want them released immediately or do you want them to be released later? Usually I'm choosing immediately that I want my students to see how they did right away because I like to allow my students to redo the forms over and over until they're happy with their grade. Now, when they get their results, they are getting missed questions, correct answers, and point values if these are all turned on. So I actually like to turn off correct answers because if they have the correct answers, then they're just going to put those all in. So I turn that one off so they're still redoing it. And then you can set a default question point value. So I always keep that at one. Responses are now down here, so I can hit that little arrow to get it to all drop down. I want to collect email addresses. That You have options for sending a copy of the responses to your students, so I like to choose when requested. And what that does is when they're actually on the Google form, it puts this little toggle switch down here where they can choose if they want a copy of their response sent to their email. The next feature is allowing response editing. In the previous tutorial, I said that I would keep it on. I actually don't want that on. I want that off because that means after I check their form, they could go back and change it. So we don't want that. Um, this one's the most important to me is making sure that it's restricted. And this would be to my school district. I'm just on my business account right now. So I want this turned on when I'm in my school district because that means students have to be in their school account. And when their email address is collected, it includes their first and last name. So I don't have to ask them for their name or anything like that. It's automatically collected. And then the next choice is limit to one response. So I would use that for a Google Forms test or quiz where I want to see how students do the first time. So for a regular assignment, I'm not using that. Then for presentation, you can choose to show a progress bar. I'm going to turn that on to show you what that looks like when we get to the next part of the tutorial. You could shuffle the question order, which is fun if you want to aggravate your students. It just depends on you know your purposes. Okay, for after submission, the confirmation message is my favorite part. So I'll hit edit and mine usually says, great job if you earned less than 10 out of 10, you may redo for a higher grade because I'm allowing my students to redo their Google form as many times as they want. And then I also like to add, if you earned less than seven out of 10, redo for a passing grade, as in it's not an option, you need to redo that. I don't understand why they would like get a five and be like, oh well, and move on when they could redo it, but they do. So this is actually a little bit of a new feature. Previously, this all was one long scrolling line. I couldn't break up the text by hitting enter, but now I can. That is a new feature I'm very excited about. So I click save, and when students finish the Google form, this is what they're going to see. And it will link to submit another response so students can do it over right away. I can't remember if this was there previously or not, but viewing the results summary, I wouldn't do that on a graded assignment, but on like a Google form where I was just collecting data for fun, if there's like a really interesting pie chart or something like that, it would be cool to toggle that on so students could see the results. So now this is a new feature as of last year, Google enabled auto save on forms. So that means if students start the form and they're logged into their school account and they have to stop for some reason or they're battery dies on their computer and they have to come back to it, it will automatically save whatever they already had on their Google form. And then we have a few defaults. So we can collect email addresses by default and we can mark questions required by default. 
So once I have this form set up exactly how I like it, what I actually do is I make it into a template. So this becomes a Google form that I actually do not touch. It sits in my Google Drive, it's marked template. So whenever I go to make a new Google form, instead of starting from scratch, I make a copy of this one and then I would come to the um, confirmation message and update it if it was different point values. But after that, I just go into the questions and start adding them and changing them to whatever I want. So I'm not actually going through and doing all the settings every single time I do a brand new Google form. So now that we've gone through all the settings, it's time for the fun part. I cannot express how excited I am about this new feature. Like this is brand new. We now have rich text formatting available in Google Forms. Hallelujah, I've been dying for this. Like when we got this for Google Classroom last year, I was so excited, but then I was like, why isn't it here on Google Forms as well? So now you can bold, italicize, and underline your text. So I highlight and click bold. I can click italicize. I can click underline. Your shortcuts like Control or Command U for underline, they work as well. The interesting thing I've noticed though is I cannot bold and italicize something. The only thing I cannot do is have something bold and italicized. It's one or the other. We can now insert links, which is a little bit different than what we were doing before. So if I click insert link, I can put in my link and I can add in text to display it because previously what we were able to do was just copy and paste a URL, but then you had the whole messy URL there instead of like a nice cloaked link that just has text there for you. So that's exciting. And we can now make lists. So we can make a numbered list or we could have a bulleted list. So before, if I wanted to add any kind of emphasis to something in the directions, I was using all caps. I was adding little asterisks. Um, and that was kind of it. That was all I could really do. But you were able to add a new line by hitting enter. So at least we had that, but this is way, way better. And then of course, if you wanted to start over, you can remove the formatting by clicking here. Okay, so are you ready for this? Now, if we go to the questions, we get rich text formatting here as well. So super, super excited about all of this. I was doing a little quick something for Instagram just to show all the new updates, but I didn't realize that I could actually use rich text formatting up here on the title as well. So bold, italic, underline, you can even insert a link there. Very cool, again, so excited. Now the next things I'm going to show you are not new features. They're just things that I've learned since the last tutorial that I wanted to share here. So we're going to start with my favorite. Let's say I have a question that's like solve for X. Now what I like to do with this is make it a short answer question so students have to actually figure it out and type in their answer. So I'd go into answer key and put in whatever the answer is and I want all the other answers marked incorrect. So before I found out about this feature, what I would have to do was figure out every possible way that my students might try to type in an answer to this question. And a lot of them are suddenly proper online. They would put in X equals one. But if they're on a Chromebook, they're putting in capital X equals one because Chromebooks automatically capitalize that first letter. Then sometimes they decide that they want to use a space. Sometimes they use spaces in weird ways. So I was having to go through and come up with all of these possibilities of answers, but not anymore. I can put in just that one correct answer, click done, and then I'm going to these three dots right here and using response validation. This is such a game changer. So you get some options there, but we're focused on numbers and I want my number to just be a number. And so I can put in error text that says, enter your answer as a number only. And so when I go to the preview to see what this looks like for students, if they try to put in X equals something, they get yelled at through Google Forms and it says enter your answer as a number only. So that way they know, oh, I should just put in the one. So yes, it's a game changer. 
Now you have lots of options here. You have greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. So if your answer is a range of numbers, you could use that. You also have between or not between. You have equal to, not equal to, and then there's whole number. Now equal to is great if you want them to have to get the exact correct answer before they can move on. Now, if you're not a math teacher, there are some other options you can play with. I personally don't use anything other than numbers, so I'm not exactly sure how all of these work. But if you want to use text, you can have it contain something, not contain uh, email or a URL format. You can go to length. You can have a maximum or minimum character count. And then here you add the number. You can put the error text so people understand why it's not working. And then you have regular expression. So it could contain, not contain, match or not match, some kind of an expression. I'm not fully sure how that one works, but I stick with the numbers. If you decide you don't want response validation, you could just click that little X and it will go away. The last feature is using sections. So if I go here, I can add a section. And within that section, I just wanna add in a couple of questions just so we can see what this looks like. And I'm going to actually go up here to these three dots. I'm going to duplicate the section so that I can have a part three as well. Okay, so with the sections, these three dots give me some options. So we saw duplicate, I could move it. So I can either hover over these six dots and actually just drag and drop them, or I can use these arrows to move them to where I want and click save when I'm happy with their placement. With the three dots, you could also delete a section or you could merge it with above so that you have one longer section. So the reason that we like sections is because if I want my students focused on one portion of the form at a time, they only get one section at a time. So here's where your progress bar is. That's what this is for. I need to answer this question and then I can click next. And then I need to actually answer the questions here in part two before I'm able to move on to part three. So that's why we like sections. Now, if you are trying to see everything on your form at once or closer to it, you have these little arrows that point to each other at the top of each section, and that just collapses them so that you're just seeing whatever you have up here for the section and the description if you have one, and then you're just seeing what the question says. So it's not showing you all of the answer choices and it just condenses your Google form so it's easier to see what you have and where it is. Now that's something that I use a lot if I use this option and import questions from other forms. So if I click that, it brings up other forms that I have. This is funny, this popped up because of Organized Teacher Challenge. I did like a, a dummy Google Drive that was supposed to look crazy and I named it Pure Chaos. So these, oh, here's one that has actual like math stuff. So if I click that, I can import questions. I could select all of them or I could just choose certain questions. And if I click import, it'll add them in to my bottom section. So here you can see number one from that form and there's number two. And it does put these out of order. So it's helpful if you move them around, but if I have these collapsed and I had actual text there, it would make it easier for me to move things to where I wanted them. I could even move the questions to other sections if I wanted. This is a Google form that I use for practice when we are working on algebraic proofs in geometry. And so each proof is a different section and there are some questions about it. So I almost forgot to mention this when we're talking about response validation. So I'm recording this a little bit later, but what I can do that's really cool with response validation is set up a password for students to be able to access this form. So if you go into responses, you can toggle the switch over and you're essentially turning off the form where you're not taking any more responses. So that is something that I like to do when everyone has completed the assignment so that I don't have students coming back and trying to like redo it later after I've already completed grading it. However, if students have been absent, they need more time to work on the form, but I don't want the other students that had the appropriate amount of time to come back and still try to do the form. Um, so I don't want to turn off accepting responses, but what I can do instead is create a section 
that is kind of like a gatekeeper to the rest of the form. And I'm going to add one question. It's going to say, enter the password. This automatically switches to being short answer format. And I'm not even going to put in an answer key here. We don't need it. I'm going to go over to response validation. I'm going to go to text. I want it to contain. And then I'm just making up a random word. I mean, not making up a word, but just choosing a word at random. Um, so let's say that the password is summer. You want to make sure you put in custom error text. So I just put, you need the password to open this form. And when I go to preview, this is what it looks like. It says you need a password, but it doesn't show you anything else in the form. If I put in an incorrect password, it just tells me that I need the password. You could even say that, you know, you need to talk to the teacher about getting the password or something like that. So if I put in the correct password and click next, now I'm able to get to the form and go through and do everything else. The only other thing I just thought of is you want to make sure that this is not worth a point, like they shouldn't be getting points for putting in the password. So essentially what I would do then is tell any student that's been absent that is allowed extra time on the form that this is the password that they need to enter. I make it really simple, just lowercase letters all the way through one word, and that's basically it. And then students are able to make up the form later, but the students that you don't want making up the form can't get to it. And I just want to show this. If you don't put in custom text and we go to put in the wrong password, it tells you what the password is. So just make sure that you actually put in some of that error text. I just remembered there's one more new feature that I want to show you before we end this. If I go to customize theme, are you ready? This one's so exciting. We can now change the fonts. They give you text style before it was like you had a couple to choose from and they were kind of lame. But now all your Google fonts are here. So you're not just getting a couple that you could use. You're getting everything that you have in your font library for Google. This one's one of my favorites. So you can get whatever you want. You have for header, for the question, and for your text, you can have different fonts now. It's just beyond exciting. I love this so much. And this is another feature. I'm not sure if they had it before because I never really played with it, but the header was there. You could either choose from ones that they give you or you can upload your own. That much I knew. I just never really used it. So if you choose a header, what I like is that it changes your color options to match whatever's in your header. So that's pretty cool. Just like a nice way to optimize it and just change the colors, but change it to something more specific. And that is everything for this Google Forms update. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.